What is wet in wet and how can you use it to produce some attractive lighting effects in watercolour? Welcome to another watercolour demo, this time featuring Porth Levin in Cornwall, UK. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter and tutor producing videos and online workshops to help improve your paintings. In this step-by-step -step demo, I will go through the complete painting process with you, choosing the right subject to paint, first of all, and then going through the painting process, doing an outline drawing, and then various watercolour techniques, like laying down a wash, first of all, and doing some wet in wet or wet onto wet uh, as we go through, and trying to get some nice tonal contrast, nice contrast in lights and darks into the scene, to enhance the sense of light. Also, at the end, I will do a little self-critique on myself, try and not be too hard on myself, but try and evaluate what went okay in with the painting and perhaps uh, touch on some things that could be improved on the next one. So this is the scene, Porth Levin uh, Harbour in Cornwall, a very pretty part of the UK. And we are looking east the morning sun coming towards us it's low tide of course when i took this photo otherwise i would be waist high in water where i where I'm, where I'm taking the photograph from but a nice scene with lot, lots of lights and dark well many darks in this one there's a focal point of these boats in the middle there. I think from a composition point of view, let me just talk about the composition first of all. I think the photograph is pretty much there with, as I say, the focal point being this row of boats, three or four boats here, catching the light, lovely light on the tops of the boats in contrast to the darker background. We have a few other smaller craft on the right-hand side and then lurking in the shadows. I zoom in, lurking in the shadows of the harbour wall there. There are some other boats we can just about make out. Strewn across the harbour surface is a, a lots of clumps of seaweed. Again, little bits of them are catching the light in that middle area there and on the right hand side as well. Another feature of this are these chains, these ropes, these chains going across the harbour surface leading up to the boat. So they're quite a nice effect leading our eye into the focal point and just another air of interest, just taking the, the view on a little bit of a journey through to the focal point. Plus there are a few little little sort of ridges on the on the harbour surface, very wet harbour, harbour surface. This will be, this painting will be a use of wet in wet wet into wet, wet on wet. Um, I think it goes by about three different uh, three different terms. And it's a way of laying down wet paint onto a, a damp or wet surface. And I'm going to be using it in two main areas. The sky, look how bright that sky is. It's pretty much going to be white paper. And then there's just a little bit of sky over to the left hand side even less on the right hand side. And then on the harbour surface, there's that bright area there that's catching the, the sun's reflection. And a little bit less of a soft edge. There are a few little hard edges in there. And some of these pebbles and shells and things that are, that are down there catching, catching a little bit of shadow. So on the whole, a fairly soft edge, definitely soft with a capital S in the top there, a little bit of a soft glow, um, a, light, a lighter patch down there. So that's the scene, Porth Levin, UK, Cornwall, UK. Let's get down to the painting, first of all, with the outline drawing. Just a little bit of mention on the materials I'm using. Paper is Saunders Waterford cold press paper, NOT, not. So it's medium roughness and it's 140 pounds in weight. It is going to buckle a little bit in the painting process, especially with 
all the water I'm going to <laughs> apply on it. Uh, you'll see shortly when I when I start the painting, it is going to buckle, but it will dry flat. It's should go with some masking tape. The paints are Jackman's handmade paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK professional quality paints. More information on that in the description of this video. I will cover the colours as I go through the painting process. I'll try and remember to, as I go through the painting mix, mixing, which can be quite erratic with me at some times. I just sort of, I guess, intuitively just pick up a few colours without maybe consciously thinking about it. But I will try and mention those colours as I go through. And the brushes as well. Drawing now with a fairly soft pencil. This is a 2B mechanical pencil from, from Faber, Faber Castell. I think that's how it's pronounced. And it's a fairly thick lead, it's two mil thickness. So it's gonna give me a significant line just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm laying down uh, the, the paint, um, particularly at the early stages with uh, a lighter wash, I can, I can sense, I can see those, those, the outlines. I've started drawing the focal point. These, well, I've got three boats. I think there are actually four boats in the, in the source photo. I've, I've reduced it to three. I think that's enough. There was a sort of fairly old one at the end, just um, peeking behind the end boat. Didn't think it really did much for the composition. A few of these boats over on the right hand side. The boat I had to get right is that main big boat and try not to make it too central to, to the scene. And a little bit to the right, of the center. So I'm, I'm spending some time getting that right. And then now the line of the bottom of the harbour wall, those boats over on the far left that we can really hardly see at all. I'll have a few in there just to give, just to fill in that space and really just communicate more of the, the sense of the scene and, and all of these, these small boats dotted around the place. A very important skyline. I've left a gap in the skyline where that bright light is going to be because that will be unpainted. I don't want to leave a nasty pencil line showing through there. So I've uh, just um, left a little bit of a gap there. Line on the left, line on the right, and then just an indication of a few buildings of the town above the harbour wall. Fairly simple. We are looking into the light. So we've got lots of silhouetted shapes. It's when I took the photo, it was late autumn, early winter. And so we've got low sunlight and looking into the light like this, looking, looking contra jour into the light. Where we, we had lots of darks at the town, you can hardly notice the, the, the building at all, but there were little faint ridges of the rooftops and, and, and objects catching the light. There were, some, there, were, there were some bunting and maybe some street lights as well that were, were catching the light. So uh, I'll, I'll indicate a few of those. Right. Wet in wet, then I better we better start off with a wet surface. So I'm now laying down a layer of clear water onto the top part of the scene. I don't often pre-wet the paper, but as I'm trying to use this wet in wet technique to get these very soft edges, I'm laying down that water first of all and an even application. I could have done this with a little flat brush, could have done it with a sponge. I'm using my Raphael Soft Aqua brush. This is a size six. And I think I might just have a little bit of paint there from my previous painting. But that, that clear layer of water and it's soaked into the paper. The, the Saunders Woodford paper it's got a nice 
balance of absorbency. I think if you if you're suffering from paper that's either too absorbent or not absorbent enough, or if you're not using if you're not using a hundred percent cotton paper, then give Saunders a try. It's, it's good quality paper, and give it a go. With with paper, you do need to use it quite a few times just to get used to the, the surface. I'm applying that little bit of colour then to the left and the right, mainly on the left. I use a bit of lavender down there in the bottom of the my palette. Uh, let me just go let me just go through the the colours on my palette, which never changes. I've used this for the same colours for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. So, um, well, certainly 40 years. Uh, neutral tint at the top, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Have to think then. Spring green, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue. We're coming down the middle now. Cobalt blue. So, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. Always have difficulty saying that. Alizarin, alizarin crimson. Cadmium red, light red, or English oxide, as Jackman's Art Materials calls it. Then cadmium, two up from the bottom, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow, looking a little bit dirty there at the moment. And then running across the bottom, I've got that lavender. And bottom right, a little bit of white gouache that I will use um, a little bit of when I come to certain lighter areas of the scene. So I've completed that sky, fairly simple sky. Excuse the glare on the paper because of the angle of the lighting. It's just catching a little bit of the glare. Now, exactly as I did with the sky, I'm doing with the harbour surface, pre-wetting the paper. There is a little bit of... Um, residual paint on my brush it's not completely clear as i'd like it at this stage but it'll do and just pre-wetting this the the surface there up to the edges of the boats and the bottom of the harbor now because the lighter patch on the harbor floor is going to have a slightly harder edge, not as softer edge as the, the sky. I'm just going to let that soak in a little bit and go back to the buildings, just a, an underlying wash for the buildings. So normally with a wash, normally with my paintings in that wash, I cover the whole paper except those little objects, those, those, those objects that I want to either keep white or I want to paint in a particular way. So with street scenes, it would be cars. I would paint around cars, maybe a few of the people. And in a harbour scene like this, painting around the, the main boats. So just a little bit of an underlying wash for the background buildings. When I add in the darker areas of the background buildings, I just leave a few little slithers of light. This, this is what, this is the colour it's going to show through and it will dry a little bit light in this. So I might, um, might need to darken in a few areas, but just any sort of colour there really, to be honest with you. Some warm, some cools in there. A little bit of a an initial blob of colour on those boats going up the left-hand side. And they'll be pretty much, well, I'm going to make sure that they're, they're pushed back and there's not too much detail with them. But just enough information just to, just to really say that these are some distant boats and it, within the shadow of the harbour wall. I'm still using my Raphael Soft Aqua brush, size 6. And now for the harbour bed which has got an interesting mixture of base colours. I'm not sure I get it right for, on the first pass, but there's there's mauves in there, there's 
browns, there's sort of opaqueish colours as well. I'll start off with a little bit of, um, well, tiny bit of lavender there, but burnt sienna. And just as I go through, again, painting up to those boats. See how the colour goes. Change into a little bit of blue. And I didn't wet the the surface of the harbour as much as I did the sky. So whilst I am getting a fairly soft edge there, so I'm painting up to that lighter area and not making it too symmetrical, making it a nice sort of organic shape. And you can see there in the bottom right, this paper's drying quite rapidly at the moment with the conditions where I am. It's a fairly dry, dry day and a little bit damper up towards the boats, but uh, down that bottom right hand corner, quite, quite dry. And also with the brush stroke directions, that's just giving a little bit of hint. That might leave, as it dries, it might leave just a subtle line just to show us the the, uh, the direction, the surface of, uh, I pointed out there's little tiny ridges in the, in the sand on the base. So just draw a few of those in. So we're, we're actually now beginning just to, Get that sense of light with the with the darker paint up against the that lighter softer area where just as it's drying the paint is still moving a little bit there's there's a slight slope on my board i'm going to leave a little bit of a a gap at the but the back of the main boat beyond that i'm i'm just painting a little, little bit of the the algae the the, uh, the seaweed and using that spring green That value is probably about right. I don't want to go too light with this harbour surface. So as it's drying, I will just check on that before going into the next stage. So I think it does need darkening up just a little bit there. If you like this video and you want to help me out, uh, there's a few things you can do to help me. The number one thing really is to subscribe. If, you, if you're new to this channel, this me, then subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. It does send a, a secret message to Google just to say that you appreciate these sorts of videos and then they'll keep churning out and showing you more videos like this, uh, not just for me, but from other artists as well. So uh, it would be great to uh, get your subscription if you're not already subscribed. And also, if you want to get close to my sort of painting process, then I run a sort of online painting club called Patreon, which you might have heard of. But Patreon is uh, I've got my, my presence on Patreon. I've got this little friendly watercolour community with artists of all different levels from all over the world. I think we, we represent every single uh, continent. But up there, I do share more exclusive content and videos as they're produced like this one. My, my, my patrons get to see this first. I want to share that with them and and. Uh, no pesky adverts as well. So they get to see that without any interruptions. And also they get to share the source photo. And a few of them, depending on what level you're at, there is um, uh, there are different levels. Just, uh, just to interrupt myself, I'm just laying in a little bit more water where that light is hitting the top of the, the skyline there. Just to, just as a sort of, preliminary thing before putting in the background building. So back to Patreon. Yeah, once a month we do have some rather challenging and pesky watercolour 
projects that we we decide on doing and i i'm the lucky person that get gets to give everyone a little bit of a critique uh, which can be via a short video to you uh, an individual video that i make for you um, or it may be a little bit of uh, a message a text message so for more on that go up to patreon.com slash tim wilmot t-i-m w-i-l-m-o-t background buildings now starting with the skyline and a different brush this is a princeton aqua elite the it's got it's got some long long uh, uh brush hairs on this one which i think is quite quite nice for doing more detail work. it's quite a vers versatile brush i couldn't have used it really for for doing the wash a little bit too small i believe they need to do one size this is size 12 uh, but it's ideal here where I want to be a little bit more precise with the rooftops. And with the rooftops, not, not too, I don't need too perfect with the rooftops. I paint in a sort of loose way. Um, and I'm coming up to this damp area now. Timing here is of the essence. I want to go a little bit lighter here also. And while it's damp, I could also lift out some of the paint if I want to. Over on the right-hand side, mirror image, go up to this damp area. So there was about sort of three or four inch width of paper that I, I pre-wet before doing this. And you can see I'm getting another soft edge. We're doing a little bit more wetting wet. So there's, this is the third, third instance of wetting wet in this painting and really just a brief, description of some of the buildings there and then continue down i'm hitting some drier paper now so we'll get some harder edges again but just create the impression i'm looking at the source photo for a little bit of inspiration here but hopefully we're just starting to get the feeling of that that lower edge of that bright sunlight coming towards us and that soft edge just around the the base of that so skyline, these these houses, residential houses, I think uh, left and right, a few little chimneys poking their head up above the, the skyline and continue on down to the harbour wall. And then as I do that, I will try and leave little, little horizontal slithers of that paper showing through and maybe some geometric shapes of some triangles and squares of rooftops catching catching the light, little chimney tops and so on. Just a, a few as I go down. I'm alternating the colours as well. The, the, some of the buildings are white, but they're in deep shade, so they're a sort of mid-blue, really, I, if I could describe it as that, like a mid-blue. And then they're, they're surrounded by all these dark shapes of the rooftops and, and the road or sh further darker shadows between the buildings. I want to keep fairly dark on the left. I'll leave a little bit of a a line for the harbour wall as well. Just skirt my way over. And a soft brush like this does give some nice marks just randomly some in interesting shapes appear those negative shapes of the rooftops just looking at the angle maybe just enhance the geometric shapes like triangles rectangles diamonds this is the top of the harbour wall Fairly horizontal. 
doesn't need to be perfectly straight. Just gives it a little bit, a little bit of character when it's not perfectly straight. I don't think straight would work actually. And then while the top is still damp, a bit more wet in wet. This time though, talking about or thinking about the ratio of water to paint, those darker marks, that's thicker, that's less water to, to paint ratio. So I don't get any nasty blooms appearing and the paint settles. It might just spread a little bit, but it gives that sort of soft edge to those darker shapes. Down to the boats in the distance on the left, they, a bit of negative painting around those. They, they are too light, so I need to glaze over those, go over them with a, a little bit of a darker colour later. But I'll just for the, for the moment just continue over to the right. And you can see the buildings in the background are still, still quite damp. So I can pick up a little bit of paper towel, make sure it's clean. And with a good surface on that paper towel, just crunch it up a little bit. And then starting from the skyline, just quickly rub it down. Just create those little radiating marks. Don't want to overdo it. I don't want to take out all of that area. And also timing is important here. When, when I do this, obviously the, the paper towel, it's going to absorb some of the moisture. And I don't want too hard an edge. Like that last one there. The edge is just a little bit too hard. Um, I'll just see how it how it how it sort of uh, continues while the, the paper's still still damp. But uh, timing was important there to do that just at the right moment. Coming down to the shapes the boats and a bit of negative painting around these very important around that bigger boat the cabin on the bigger boat to get a nice crisp clean edge there because i went over with the lighter wash first of all on top of these cabins i need to be be matching going up to that edge or maybe just a little bit over to to make sure there's no sort of two-step edge in values, two-step edge to to the the uh, the the edge of those objects. This brush as well as it having a very good point, it's got a very good edge. So holding the brush at a little bit of an angle, sometimes 45 degrees. It's almost like a, a little flat brush. It's quite versatile from that point of view. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Good old mixture of colors. My palette's on a, a little bit of a slope as well, so water's accumulating just at the the bottom of those wells. So rather than pick up some clean water, which is which is over to the right, I'll just pick up a bit of that uh, water down there. Yeah, that's quite dark now. Burnt Sienna, neutral tint. I very rarely use ne neutral tint for pure neutral tint for shadows. I'm always going to, as a rule, add it to another color or add another color to it. But for those real dark darks, then there'll be less of the other color. It'd be 
a majority of it, most of it will be neutral tint in the mix. Completing then on the right, the boats on the right, and just my last chance really to lift off a bit of color. You can see the, the glistening is just starting to disappear from the background buildings. So it's getting to a, a time where it can be difficult to do any more easy, easy lifting off with a, with a paper towel or a damp brush. And that process of just adding in a little bit of, or just lifting off a little bit of paint, does, it, does give it a bit more of a lively feel, I think. Gives it a bit more character and leaves the viewer thinking, well, what's, what's causing this? Could that be a little bit of mist or a little bit of dampness up there? Uh, maybe smoke coming up from something. Um, does, does give a little bit more, another dimension to the painting. Right, strengthen up these boats. I'm adding in the dark hulls here, the, the, the bottoms of the boats. And I can straight away see they are still far too light. The, the tops of the boats are far too light compared to the background. I need to push them back a bit and then give them a bit of a soft edge and dark, darken them up a bit. Now for a little bit of seaweed that's lying on the surface. And it's quite a dark green on, in the distance. So I'm creating that with a little bit of Viridian green, a bit of the spring green, um, just to, to get that darker green. Last, last chance for a few more darks in the top part of the buildings. It's actually stayed quite damp on the right hand side. It's drier. It's actually a bit drier in the middle. So it's a little bit, still quite a little bit damp on over on the left, you, you can see it's just a little bit of a, a glisten there. And over on the right hand side. I think at this stage, just trying to emphasize the loose feeling of the painting, I'm just messing it up a bit. And that's what I was doing with the, the paper towel, just lifting off a few little strategic places, just a few little select spots, just lifting up off that off that color. Could have gone in with a soft, a, a damp soft brush just to tease off a little bit of the, the paint just to give a, a bit of a, a lighter value and a, a softer edge. And where it's gone a little bit too dark, I can still lift that off. with hopefully a clean paper towel, not dirty like that one. Right, back to the seaweed. Starting on the left hand side, fairly dark up there. And I can immediately see now the harbour bed and foreground have dried, and they're just a little bit too light. I don't have that contrast yet of that white glow from the, the reflection from the sun. Also, I'm trying, I'm really guessing what the seaweed will look like on the left in the distance because I omitted the slipway. I don't think that slipway that came down from the left was actually giving anything to the comp composition. So I omitted that, I left that one out and I'm just really guessing what the 
seaweed will be like over on the left. It's really strewn all over the place here. And the direction of my brush marks will just give a little bit of indication to the gradient and the texture of the surface. So I'm using, I'm still using this Princeton brush, the um, this long round aqua elite brush. And mostly the side of the brush is not too much paint on the brush. And I'm getting into an area where I do need to darken that up before I add in any darker shapes over there. So just put a little bit over on the right hand side, which again, that needs to be darkened up a little bit as well. Just when I'm looking at the photo, I'm just looking at shapes of these lumps of seaweed on the bed. They're, they're just fairly, they're just all over the place in a random, random patches. A bit of a dry brush mark does help here as well. putting in a few of these lines, but I think I do need to go over that area. It's still a little bit too light, but I'll just, I can go over these lines, doesn't matter. So I'm starting from the left and dragging the brush into that lighter area. It's a dry surface, so we're not in wet in wet anymore. It's wet, it's wet on dry, wet in dry. I'm gonna get a little bit of a hard edge. Now, the top part of that lighter area, I don't need to be too bothered about that because Below the boats, that's going to be a, a dark shadow, so I don't need to be too concerned with that, but I do need to be careful with the getting the value right of this dark red, just going a little bit darker than I, than I went initially with that first wash, and then just being careful with the edge around this lighter area using a dry dry brush and trying to get a fairly natural shape to the edge of that lighter patch and then mirror image on the right hand side starting from the right just dragging the brush very softly not using the tip of the brush but using the side of the brush to give just a lighter touch to the surface and just just depositing just a little bit of the paint on the on the paper as i said earlier i'm i'm using saunders waterford cold press paper so it's got a little bit of a a texture to the surface it's not as textured as rough of course it, uh, but it still has just enough, uh, for me anyway, I'm used to it, uh, just to get, give that little bit of a deckled, speckled pattern to it. So this is that lighter area. I can see it's not as light as I'd like to. I think my brush was just a little bit dirty when I laid down that clear water back a bit. Um, that if, if I'd have used uh, clear water there, I think it's always a good idea to thinking about 
pots of water. I normally just have one, but I think if I had a second tub of water, second bucket of water, water container, uh, wash my brush down that, that would give me a bit more of a guarantee of a clearer water for laying down that little bit of a, just pre-wetting the surface before doing any wet in wet. Now, while the paper is drying a bit, I'm going to speed up the process with a air dryer, just that foreground. I want to make the harbour wall a little bit darker. So I'll first we'll make sure everything is very dry. Got to be a little bit careful with, with the hairdryer, of course. It's going to make the surface a little bit warmer so paint will dry faster. So you might want to just leave it a little bit till it, till it gets back to room temperature. And still with that, Number 12, Princeton, put in a darker colour to the harbour wall, down to the bottom of the harbour, around those boats again, a third time. Just to find the, the gaps between the boats a bit more up to that first boat, top of the boat, so I picked up a bit of water just to dilute what I had on the brush to glaze over these, the tops of these boats just to make them a bit darker just blend them in a bit more to the background, give them a soft left edge and just a few more lines to, just to make them a little bit more boat-like with uh, marks on the tops of the boats, outboard motors, things like that. And then a little bit of a, a shadow below the hulls of the boats as well. Thinking about the light, thinking about where the light is coming from, keeping the right hand side just a little bit of light, a slither of light down the right hand side. A bit of contrast with the background of the harbour wall. Now I can paint in the the three main boats in the middle, the main the main focal point of the painting, and I've painted around the, the top edge of those boats, around the bottom of the boats now, painting in the cabins and the the hulls of the boats, but just remembering to leave those little slithers of paper unpainted which is the light hitting say the top of the cabin or particularly the front of the boat or just along the the top edges of those boats can go a little bit darker towards the bottom of the boat and add in a bit more paint towards the bottom there just leave that there that bit of a bead because when I go in with the shadow, I want it to blend in with that hull. So that would give me a nice soft edge. Again, another bit of wet in wet. A bit like when I was adding in the dark paint into the, into the background buildings. That, that darker, thicker colour into that damp surface. It gives you that soft edge, which I think gives a nice... It's a nice transition from the hull of the boat to the shadow of the boat. So we can't 
we can't see exactly where the bottom of the boat is. It's just all a bit vague. Now, this main boat, I need to be very careful here with the cabin. The windows are a little bit darker, but there's a tiny bit of light showing through them. So I'll get in the darker parts of the cabin, the with the, the edges of the windows, and then the rest of the boat, keeping that keeping that front of the boat, little sort of slim triangle of the front of the boat. Continue over to the back. I've got that white space above that boat to deal with later on those those the, the right hand boats in the distance and a little bit of the harbour bed as well um, between between these boats and those boats. But just continue on with with this one here and just keeping it going. We can see it granulating quite nicely. Leave again a little bit of a, a bead at the bottom of that boat. I can start now with a bit of the shadow. It's a bit of everything going in here. Cobalt blue, lavender, neutral tint. I tend to keep my darks. I've got three mixing wheels. Ideally, I'd like four. Uh, so that I would have, if I had four, I'd have um, warms in one area, cools in another, greens in another, and then darks. So that would be the four. But anyway, shadow, very important shadow. And it's not, it's not a sort of ultra hard edge to this shadow. The edge of the shadow is, is bumping along little, the, the contour of the harbour bed, which is going over, you know, we've got little bits of seaweed and stones and sh seashells and, and uh, rigging and these chains going across the, the harbour bed. So, again, sticking with this brush, I'm going to get a fairly nice edge to those shadow shapes. Holding the brush at about a 45 degree angle. This is, apart from the background, this is probably the darkest part of the painting. I think it needs to be a bit darker than the background, just so that if the background was a bit too dark, it, that would bring it forward. I want to that background, I want to try and push it back a bit more. Now, the middle boat has, it's not really a boat shape, that one. It's, well, it, it, it's got a sort of flat, flat front to it, a flat nose to it. I'm not sure what the nautical term would be, not a pointy bit, but more of a blunt bit to it. But the hull is like a dark, dark red. So I used a bit of alloys and crimson and my cadmium red to give that and then just merge it in with the shadow. Now the shadow, as I come to the outer edges of the shadow, it does need to go a little bit lighter. So I picked up a bit of water to dilute a bit, there, yeah, another bit of water, pick a bit of water, and then it's all still a little bit wet. If I want to go dark again, I've still got that, that darker bit up there. And the shadow on this right-hand side, it's going over some seaweed so I've made it a, like a dark green I've picked up a bit of viridian green to to give me that the, the uh, darker bits of seaweed got to be a bit careful here not to overwork it and make it um, a little bit too too muddy and yeah overworked you know where you see where you see it being laboured on a bit too much, too many brush marks, and it, the, the paint gets a little bit sort of thick and dry, and it sort of lacks that sort of luster and transparency. Okay, 
Now, going over to the right here, we've got more of this dark seaweed. Again, a little bit of that dark green. This is quite damp in there. So again, we've got a bit of wet in wet, thicker paint onto a damp surface, gives us that softer edge. A few more clumps of seaweed down here, bottom right corner, a few more coming in from the right. We'll have a few coming out from the back of that boat, just beyond that boat. Try and keep that white, I quite like that white puddle. At the back of that boat, that white uh, little bit of reflection. That's actually turned out lighter than the than the one in the middle, unfortunately. Never mind. Over on the left, a few more. Now, there's not much paint on the brush now. It's fairly dry and just in random, fairly random areas, creating those little spots. I could do a bit of splattering here, but if I, sometimes when I do splattering, it, it, it goes into parts of the painting I don't want to go to. If I did some splattering here, it would probably go all over those boats, which are fairly light compared to the, the, shadows so I'm just it's going to take a little bit more going to take a little bit more time but just to with a small brush just add in little dots here and there and those dots will be smaller in the distance but a little bit larger larger pebbles coming towards us filling in that gap beyond the Focal point boats, that little bit of the harbour bed showing over there. Quite that's gonna be lighter over there than the seaweed. That's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lighter green than the seaweed to the left that's a little bit further away from the light source. Continue on the seaweed over on the right hand side, down to the top of the background boats there. Maybe just a, a little bit of the paper showing through. Now for the cabins of these. I'm going to have a couple of boats over here. And slightly lighter cabin. Light hitting the top of those cabins. So leave those white. And we'll have that one. We'll have that one red. And then we'll have... The other one, blue. Darker than the cabin. I'll paint the windows in later on, but just get that. Those two boats in down to the top of the other boats and a bit of shadow underneath. So thicker again, the same method, darker, thicker paint and it just whatever the physical term is <laughs> so osmosis or something like that the the uh, the paint just defies gravity and goes uphill and gives me that soft transition from the light from the light to the dark right continue on rather laboriously creating little dots and some of these some of these black dots I will Add in a bit of white paint just to the, those on the left, a little bit of white paint to the right. Think about where the light's coming from. A little bit of white paint just to give a bit of a, a sparkle to it. There's so many, when I look at the photo, there's so many of these little shells and cockles and, and things that are they're catching the light there. I think maybe the, the when I took the photo, the tide must have just literally gone out in the last hour or so, and it just left that that surface really wet and shiny.
few more darker clumps of seaweed in within the shadows just to make them a little bit more interesting now got to be very careful here could have gone a little bit darker with the cabin but i'm going to go a little bit lighter with the windows the glazing of those windows just a little bit lighter i can I can emphasize those window shapes with a little bit of a an outline to them, but I don't want to overdo that. Make it look like a... Well, I don't want to look like a, like a line of wash. don't want to go in too, too precise with an outline to those windows with a thin, dark line. Bit more attention to those boats over there on the left I think they're about right now in the in the photo they they're hardly visible they're they're just barely barely visible few windows small brush this is a number four round synthetic brush and try and create just a few little squares and rectangles. I'm not painting in every window. I think there's some, where I am now, I think there's some shops, like a little single story shop there. So there might, might have been some wider, larger windows there. But just a few little marks in that top part, just to give the impression of distant buildings, not, not all of the windows. Right, pick up some of that white gouache now that's down in my bottom of my palette, which I reserve for a few things. Now, make it paint in a few of these fenders and boys that are just resting. Well, these are fenders resting on the sides of these boats. That will, now it looks quite bright now, but as it dries, it's going to go darker. It's going to lose its brightness which is all right because those are well they're, they're all in the they're all in the shade so i don't need to be too light with those windows of the main boats now so being a focal point need to be very careful with their shape. I didn't really draw in these windows, but uh, just uh, getting in most of those windows. I guess in my painting process, we're we're we're, in, we're firmly into the detail stage now. So we've gone through. The drawing, the the uh, wash. I like to think about the sort of four or five Ds of watercolor. So drawing, drawing is the first D. Second D is the daubing. And then we've got the darks is the third D. My shadows, if you like, that that's adding in the form to things. And now the final D, the details. So smaller brush, good point to it. And generally a darker paint, less water as well. So almost a dry brush mark there for that line, that painted line at the top of that boat. Really does, I think, in, in one in one stroke it does give it more of a boat-like appearance so just a few lines there for the outer edge of the window a few more as i see them there's a few more not every single line on that boat which might just overdo it and it is in the in the, the shade as well so we don't want to make um, some of those 
lines. Turn out too much, few windows to those background, the boats on the right hand side, not too dark, not too precise because they're they're in the distance. A line at the top of the hull of those. That's it, keep going. Uh, use my finger just to blend things a little bit more or lift out the, the paint as well. I'll just sneak in another boat there, insert one in there, just think it just needs something over there. A few more little marks on the right hand side. If I've, if I've overdone it uh, quickly, as, as quickly as I can use my finger just to lift up that paint. Now, looking through the window of that main boat, I can just about see the sides of the fret, the, the cabin on the other side. So that was that softer, softer, darker line. Just a bit of detail to the tops of the fenders. You can see they're, they're going a little bit darker already. They've lost that, that brighter look. And I think they will go a little bit, they'll go a little bit darker still. Now with this, this smaller synthetic round brush that's got a fairly good point to it, I'm now drawing some of the rigging and chains that are over the surface of the harbour and just giving another sort of design element to it, a bit of like a sort of radiating pattern of these chains, which you commonly see on these, these harbour scenes, very attractive lines of ropes and chains that connect. They, they connect things. That's the word I was looking for. They're, they're connecting things. And with a bit of, they're helping with the perspective of the scene as well. And they're leading the eye in. The two nearest chains, I need to make them chain-like. So the links of the chain, I need to do these little tiny hoops with this brush. Now, in, in places, these chains, they're sort of, they, they've sort of sunk into the surface of the harbour. So they're just partially um, submerged under, underneath the, harbour bed and that will be, be a little bit more pronounced on the near one so you know, a few little dotted lines up to I don't know where it's going but it just it just serves a useful purpose that's all just going to that boat then another one start off with a a larger chunk of metal they're partially submerged and then just continue with these chain links to the next boat. I'm not sure if it's actually serving any purpose with this boat or whether it goes underneath and goes somewhere else. But uh, we'll lead it, I'll lead it up to this boat here. So like like the little dots on the harbour bed. I'm just spending, this is an important design element to this picture. And I just need to spend a little bit more careful time painting those in. A few off the back end of that boat, a few little darker lines going across the surface. Now just add in a few of these little lines 
these little ridges, just a few. They need to be lighter than the chains I drew earlier. Don't want to overpower those. So just an indication of the, just a few of the little, little the minute ridges, maybe just a few millimeters deep, just little sort of rivulets of uh, where the water is, has been draining away. And a bit of light maybe catching one side of those little indentations in the in the surface. I'm using now a Lebensen rigger brush, which is a synthetic brush, and it gives me an incredibly thin line, great for doing ropes fences, posts. So I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm in the detail stage now, just adding in some finer, darker details of the, the rigging and so on. Not too much water here. And the rigger brush, it can actually hold quite a fair bit of paint. The, the um, length of the hair is about, maybe about an inch. So, so it does. It does hold a little bit of water. A few more little dots for some more shells. Make those shapes a little bit larger in the foreground. And what I'm looking for here also is to add. If I spot a little lighter patch on the sand, I could put a little bit of a dark shape to the left of it or behind it just to create a little bit more of a, the, the shape of it, the, the, um, the, the feeling of uh, the, the shape of that object and a little bit of a bit more of a sort of three-dimensional form to it, like I'm doing there, a little bit of darkness below that lighter value. So I've got a little bit more of the spring green, adding in a few more patches of seaweed here. And a bit more on the left hand side, just really enforcing how dark it is on the left and then we go lighter in towards the middle. Before I go to the next stage, I want to make sure everything is 100% dry. So I'm using my hairdryer to speed up the process, particularly around those darks. I don't want to smudge those because I've gone in quite thick with the paint. The, I, I do need to make sure that it's absolutely dry before I go in with uh, a little bit of the, the white paint too emphasize that. Just to the left of those fenders, adding in a bit of shadow on the fender and a little bit of shadow on the side of the boat, plus a little bit of rope dangling over the side, just connecting those fenders. Some details on top of the cabin, bits of uh, um, supports for lights or sonar equipment or something. I'll, I'll strengthen that up um, surely with, with the white paint. So I'm making sure now my rigger brush is very clean. And I, I do have that little blob of white paint on my palette, but to be honest with you, it keeps getting dirted up with water. And I, I just keep that white paint down there if I need to add in any, any sort of 
not a bright white paint, but if I need to, maybe if I'm doing a field or some grasses or something like that, then I can I can pick that up. But if I want pure white, then I'd just take it fresh out of the tube. And so this rigger brush is damp. It's got a, a minute amount of water on it. And I'll start with some of the background lines, just a few verticals, making it all a, a little bit more nautical and harbour-like and a few more highlights on the side of those boats on the background, maybe just a few little horizontal highlights as well. But those, those verticals, they do serve to also connect different elements, some railings on the, on the front of this boat, bits and pieces on the top of that background, the, the uh, that furthest boat, a few more on this one to strengthen up some of the hull. And then a few more here. You can see this brush does hold quite a bit of paint before I need to refresh it. So with this, I'm, I'm with the white pen, I'm gradually working down the, the paper, top to bottom. Need to add in a few highlights on the chains and the stones on the on the surface so starting in the background like as i did with the darker shapes very small little blobs very small little blobs in the distance but we can get a little bit bigger a bit larger as i come towards the foreground not too much it's just honestly there's not too much water on this brush just a few little blobs along that chain and then this one just makes it a little bit more hopefully a little bit more chain like now thinking where the sun is coming from on the right hand side on this side of the picture on this side of the painting a little bit of a blob on the right hand side on pretty much nearly all of these just to again it's a little bit laborious but I think it just um, adds something to it and on the right hand side so as I go over to the right that the highlight is now going to be on the left of the objects Little bits of seaweed, wet seaweed catching the light. It would have been so difficult to paint around that. You've got to use body colour here. There's no, no way around it unless you laboriously are using masking fluid or something like that, which I've never got on with, to be honest with you. I always end up in a total rubbery mess with uh, masking fluid. Few more highlights there as we're getting towards that brightly lit area. Get a few masks over there. It's it's dry brush now. It's it's very uh, little paint little paint on, left on that brush. So there we are. Uh, now for a little bit of a, a self-critique. I'll just do a final bit of rubbing out of some of those lighter areas, just where it's unpainted. Porth Levin Harbour then, an exploration of wet in wet, several areas of wet in wet, but we're looking into the light, late 
late autumn, early winter light, the sun is low in the sky, coming over the town, harbour bed, low tide, light catching different objects, but a good opportunity to use wet in wet in several areas with the sky, laying down that that uh, lighter, laying down the, the clear water and then laying down a really light sky, but a little bit dark on that left-hand side, a little bit lighter on that right-hand side, but laying in that, that uh, little bit of a sky colour up to this area, but this is almost pure paper, that area there is pure paper. So no paint there at all. And then the harbour bed could have, because my brush was a little bit dirty, didn't notice at the time, but I could have gone a little bit lighter with that, that area there. But it was a bit of a harder edge. So I, I went in with initial wash, got that soft edge, but then used the side of my brush and a little bit more paint, gradually, carefully going up to the edge of that lighter area and just trying to create those little shapes of, the, the surface and bits of seaweed and debris down there. Bit of wet and wet in the background as well with the darker blobs, just to zoom into those. Oh, nice granulation on that on that uh, background buildings. A um, little bit of wet in wet there where I just pre-wet that sky and before dropping in the buildings, I've got that, again, that softer edge. That's a little bit hard there. Um, I think the... The where I used that paper towel just to just to lift off some of the paint. I think that worked a little bit better there. Initially worked better there, but it's all down to timing. I leave it too late. Um, I was doing something else. Leave it too late, and I got that nasty little bit of a, a hard line there. I could go back to it and pre-wet this area here, and then with a clean brush just tease off, just lift off that little bit right there. But to be honest with you, it can sometimes go wrong. Um, but I think on the whole, that's that's all right. These edges here could be a little bit softer. They're a bit too hard. I want a soft edge, we'll, we'll push it back a little bit more. Um, but we've got, we've got the, I think we've got the feeling of light hitting those background buildings. Then coming down to the harbour wall, we've got those boats on the left, just a few boat-like shapes there. Hopefully that gives the impression of those boats and the couple of boats on the right-hand side. But then the main focal point, these middle boats, with the light coming through them onto the tops of the cabins, uh, using the, the wet in wet as well with the light hull and then going in with the, the darker shadow, getting that smooth transition from one to the other. So fairly light at the top of that boat going a little bit darker then that darker thicker color for the shadow and then the 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 shadow it just sort of gradually goes uphill um, into that boat and it gives us a nice grade we, we can't actually you know the, the the actual hull is probably about there but we can't see it we don't want to see it we just want to make a sort of gradual transition from the hull to the and give it, it gives it kind of accentuates the curve of that hull as well. Like this, this near bow here, uh, we've got fairly light, and then as we go down, um, we're, we're sort of creating the the feeling of that the curve of the boat, aren't we? With that graded wash there and going into that darker, thicker color. Um, again, against gravity, it goes up and it just sort of mixes in. But again, timing timing is important there. So there we are, Port Levin, lovely spot, uh, great for painting. I've done it a few times, but this is a, a new, a new scene here. Hope you like the video. Catch up with you on the next one. Bye bye.